We are back with the next news video, and I just want to say, first off, WrestleMania weekend is next week, and we are a week and a half away from WrestleMania, that means, but also that means it's going to be a hell of a busy week for everyone involved in the wrestling news, and I may be limiting the matches that I post up because of the amount of news that we're going to have to go through, because I'm going to be, do I'm going to be putting together as many videos as I possibly can over the course of the next week, including, as I mentioned multiple times over the past couple of weeks, the fact that we got the preview coming for the joint show. We got the preview next week for the joint show between Impact Wrestling and New Japan. Also, the normal Rampage preview. Also, the Honor Super Card of Honor preview that Thursday and Friday, respectively. NXT Stand and Deliver. That Saturday, alongside WrestleMania Night 1, and then on Sunday, WrestleMania Night 2. As I will split up both WrestleManias individually, and I will not do one preview for WrestleMania, as it is two nights for a reason, so it does require, and it should have, two videos. But also, I may do previews for the, for the nights as well, it just depends on how much news there is and what there is to talk about, but it's going to be a busy week next week for WrestleMania. But now we jump in and we talk about more as uh, more wrestling news outside of WrestleMania week with Kurt Angle talking about a heaping heavy praise on The Undertaker and basically being able... I would say the reason why... Um, he heaped heavy praise on The Undertaker for the Boneyard match that took place at the Pandemic WrestleMania. At the Pandemic WrestleMania. And, basically, um, and basically said that if he was to go back and do a match, he thinks he'd be more than capable of doing a cinematic match which I think a lot of people would be excited to see Kurt Angle in a cinematic match. I mean, I think I would just love to see Kurt Angle in another match. No offense to Baron Corbin, but I think there are a lot of people that would love to see Kurt Angle in another match, so his last match wasn't against Baron Corbin, and it was against somebody else. But again, like it was mentioned in a previous, uh, in the Cultaholic News video, that the relevance of cinematic matches might have less impact, less of an impact now, because of the fact that, uh, because of the fact that the pandemic is, the necessity isn't there as much. But if you look at it from the standpoint of, it would allow a talent like Kurt Angle to be able to compete then there may be a little bit more of a necessity for it because it would allow somebody that we never thought would be able to get back in the ring or might have been limited to be able to get back in the ring the opportunity to get back in the ring. So just think about it from that perspective. We will get to the big news, but first we got news from AEW's house show. It was the AEW's second ever house show this past weekend in Troy, Ohio which was said to be not just a sellout, but a spectacular night of wrestling in Ohio, where Anna Jay returned to the ring for the first time since her injury, which it, the injury sustained was broken ribs following the street fight back in January between her, where she teamed with Tamelo against Willow Nightingale and Ruby Soho. In what turned out to be the end of that rivalry between Ruby Soho, Tay Mello, and Anna Jay. But also, Pat Buck actually returned to the ring. Pat Buck had not, I believe, Pat Buck has not been featured in an in-ring contest, in an in -ring contest since joining WWE as a producer a few years back. Pat Buck has been, uh, I believe... Pat Buck had been a wrestler back on the Indies years and years ago, specifically in the Tri-State or on the East Coast. But he had also been working with Kurt Hawkins in the Creative Pro Wrestling Training Academy on Long Island. And that is where Maxwell Jacob Friedman is one of the 
most praised worthy uh, trainees of that academy. But uh, it was good to see Pat Buck. Pat Buck said, uh, according to those who were there in attendance, Pat Buck was. It was said that Pat Buck had a good showing against QT Marshall. QT Marshall and Pat Buck had a back had a nice back and forth before the match, and of course, Powerhouse Hobbs helped his manager, I guess, get the better of Pat Buck in his return to the ring. I don't know if this means that Pat Buck will be competing more often, or maybe it will just be one of those things where occasionally on house shows, Pat Buck steps up into the ring. Which, I mean, that is entirely possible. I mean, it is one of the reasons, you know, it would give w it would give AEW an advantage as far as house shows are concerned, because Pat Buck is wildly remembered on the tri state in the tri state area as somebody that would compete. You know, in the independents on the tri in the tri state area, specifically in the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, you know, Philadelphia, in the Pennsylvania, Jersey, New York area. Um, and somebody that a lot of people remember it from the past, but I don't know. Again, I don't see that there being a necessity for Pat Buck to compete. But if Pat Buck did compete more often on house shows. Props to AEW. You know, props to AEW. If he, you know, like with Christopher Daniels, who also competed on the house show and has not really been competing on the main roster or on the regular television. But also, AEW could use that as a way to season new workers, have them compete on the house shows. And, ha I mean, yes, you would need other matches, obviously, but it would allow people like Brock Anderson some seasoning and Aaron Solo with some seasoning to be able to compete on the house shows if AEW wanted to go that route as well. And according to, speaking of a little bit more AEW news, FTR's a, a report, an update on FTR is going to be coming in the next couple of weeks as, according to Dax Harwood, there seems to be, have been a decision made that cannot be spoken about right now, but will be able to be spoken about in a couple of weeks Mind you, April is happening in a few weeks. I mean, we're two weeks away from April 1st, or about two and a half weeks away from April 1st. So, April's right around the corner, so we should be getting an update on the future of FTR in AEW very soon. An update on Kofi Kingston as we continue to wrap up. Kofi Kingston is uh, recovering at home after a successful surgery to repair his ankle. And he says, you know, from from the update, it seems like uh, it seems like Kofi is in good spirits. It is a shame that it is a shame that Kofi, uh, there was rumors of a potential return for the new day. For the new day. Um at WrestleMania with Big E being in a position where he could possibly where he could possibly get in duck where he could possibly make an appearance but the fact of the matter is we don't know we don't know what the future holds for the new day as Kofi Kingston's injury may have curtailed that arrival Um, or that returned, but hopefully with Kofi now re uh, recovering from his injury, that in the not too distant future we could see the return of the new day. One other, one other thing before we go, and that is the announcement of the next inductee into the WWE Hall of Fame. This comes from Variety. Andy Kaufman, Andy Kaufman will be finally taking his rightful spot in the hallowed halls of the WWE Hall of Fame. As Andy Kaufman, it was announced earlier today that Andy Kaufman will be joining the WWE Hall of Fame this year at WrestleMania week uh, during over WrestleMania weekend, and that joins. That means Andy Kaufman joins Rey Mysterio and the Great Muda as the inductees into as the inductees into the class of 2023 for the WWE Hall of Fame. Andy, for those of you who may not know Andy Kaufman or the significance that Andy plays in the history of professional wrestling. 
Well, look it up because it was one of the selling points of the Tales from the Territory last fall, as Andy was one of the advents of sports entertainment through his rivalry with Jerry Lawler in the Memphis Territory in the early 1980s, selling out the Memphis Territory and helping put Memphis wrestling on the map with his rivalry and using his fame from Taxi and as a comedian, creating and crafting his own form of entertainment from intergender wrestling to having his matches with Jerry Lawler and feuding with the King for the better part of a year and a half, two years down in Memphis. Andy Kaufman is rightfully being positioned for his spot in the WWE Hall of Fame. But also now, according to PW Insider, according to PW Insider, there has been talk of a referee being honored, uh, being inducted into the Hall of Fame. And it is surprising to note or it would be surprising to note that a referee has yet to be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame with the legacy of referees throughout the years, the likes of Earl Hepner, Jimmy Corderas, Charles Robinson, Mike Chioda, and various others. It is surprising that WWE has yet to induct a referee into the Hall of Fame. And in my opinion, there are a number of referees that could go in. There are a number of referees that could go into the Hall of Fame. But... I think if anybody's going to go in, it should be Earl Hebner or Mike Chioda, as Mike Chioda was sent away from WWE during uh, w Mike Chioda was released during the pandemic. And in my opinion, he deserved better after 30 years in the business. You know, in WWE, he deserved a better departure from the company than being released so unceremoniously like he was. Again, PW Insider reported that there is talk of a WWE referee of a referee getting inducted into the Hall of Fame this year, as this is the first time that Triple H has been in charge of the class, and it would be fitting for a referee alongside the likes of Great Muda, Rey Mysterio, and now Andy Kaufman. This class is shaping up to be one of the most deserving classes in WWE history. And in my opinion, there was no better way to suffice that than also to induct, finally induct a referee into the Hall of Fame because they are more than deserving to be enshrined alongside their fellow brethren. With that being said, though, that is it for the news today. Again, we are rounding out the countdown until WrestleMania. Uh, we One more full week until WrestleMania week. And the go-home show of Raw is a week from today. So it's going to be a busy week next week. So get ready because I'm going to be doing my best to get everything done and get everything out on time and ready to go for WrestleMania next week. We are two and a half weeks away from the Showcase of the Immortals. And with that being said, I will see you in the next video.